good afternoon dear students <clears throat> so today i am going to talk about the, the next important joint of the upper limb a very simple joint as compared to the elbow uh, as compared to the shoulder joint and that joint is the elbow joint now as we have talked about the shoulder joint on similar lines we will talk about the elbow joint the points which we have discussed for the shoulder joint were first point is introduction then we have talked of classification then articular surfaces articular surfaces then ligaments relations blood supply nerve supply movements and muscles producing movements and lastly applied anatomy okay so any joint in the body you are going to write in these points it's okay so you'll write introduction classification of the joint articular surfaces ligaments relations blood supply nerve supply movements muscles producing movements and applied anatomy now if you want to block, uh, talk something about the introduction of the elbow joint what you can say it's a stable joint of the upper limb okay it's a very stable joint of the upper limb it is here okay now the next point is what is classification now how is the elbow joint it is a synovial joint of it's the synovial joint first basic classification and a sub classification is hinge variety synovial joint of hinge variety now hinge is meaning hinges are things which are applied to doors which i which will allow movement of the door either opening or closing similarly elbow joint is a fixed it's a uniaxial joint there is only movement on our one axis that is either that will have only one movement flexion or extension okay that is the classification the next point is bones taking part bones taking part in the formation of the elbow joint all of us know that we have when you have saw, seen the videos of the bones you should know this which are the bones that take part in the formation of the elbow joint you should understand that first will be you will have the lower end of the humerus which is the capitulum then you will have the pulley shaped trochlea the medial epigodal so this will what are the upper end you will have the capitulum capitulum and trochlea of the humerus capitulum and trochlea of the humerus and the upper end and lower part you will have the head of the radius and here you will have the trochlear notch of the ulna okay so these are the bones that are going to take part of the radius this is the head of the radius head of radius and then you will have trochlear notch of ulna understood so what are the bones that take part in the formation of the uh, elbow joint it is the lower end of the humerus with the capitulum and the trochlea that will be the upper articular surface the lower articular surface inferior laterally it is formed by the superior surface of the head of the radius and inferior medially it is formed by the trochlear notch of the ulna okay so those are the bones that take part now before i move ahead i think so there is a Uh, meaning I, it, I can say it as a complaint or whatever. It seems that the board is too small. I agree that the board is small, but uh, it has been a mistake from my side that I have bought a small board. But can you please adjust with this? Because whatever I am drawing on the board, I draw less on the board. I speak more. So I would suggest to you that you listen to my videos rather than watch the things on the video. If there is something that you have skipped out, you can pause, rewind the video, and see whatever you want. Okay. so please try to adjust with this if it is seriously a problem i will reorder a new board which is of a big size okay so that what that is what uh, is a complaint which i am getting from very most of the students in the videos i hope the quality of the videos and the content of the video is okay so coming back to the elbow joint we have talked about the bone sticking part now the third point is ligaments now these are very important thing which you should understand now ligaments in contrast to the shoulder joint the shoulder joint we have four ligaments here we will have only three ligaments the first ligament of any synovial joint is the capsular ligament then you will have 
the second two ligaments on either side will have radial collateral ligament and then you will have ulnar collateral ligament okay there are only three ligaments to the elbow joint capsular ligament radial collateral ligament and ulnar collateral ligament now we will understand them very easily okay now host ligament please understand this ligament as i am trying to tell you because understanding of this ligament is very important capsule is very uh, important ligament of any joint how is the capsule attached the capsule is attached to the articular surface now what if this is the lower end of the humerus like this this is the lateral epicondyle this is the capitulum this is the trochlea this is the medial epicondyle and then here above the capitulum you have a fossa which is called radial fossa above the trochlea you have a fossa which is called coronoid fossa and posteriorly if you draw this again okay this is the capitulum the trochlea this there is another fossa which is called olecranon fossa i hope you remember this okay so this is how the lower end of the humerus looks now how is the capsule of the elbow joint attached the capsule of the elbow joint is attached to the humerus in such a way that it covers the capitulum it covers the trochlea it will cover the radial fossa it will cover the coronoid fossa it will go posteriorly and it will cover the olecranon fossa also okay so what lies outside the medial and the lateral epicondyles the medial lateral epicondyle and medial epicondyle are going to lie outside the capsule that is why you can feel them here on this side you can feel the medial epicondyle here you can feel the lateral epicondyle there so i'll repeat how is the capsule of the uh, elbow joint going to be attached to the humerus it will be attached to the lower end of the humerus in such a way that it covers the cap it covers the articular surface that is the capitulum and the trochlea and the fossae but the medial and the lateral epicondyles lie outside the capsule articular surfaces meaning capitulum and trochlea the fossa here will be the radial fossa coronoid fossa and olecranon fossa okay now to the uh, lower end mean how is the capsule attached to the lower end you have the radius like this you have the upper end of the radius the radius bone like this and then you will have the trochlea the trochlear notch of the ulna suppose this is how the ulna is drawn okay now how will be the capsule of the elbow joint attached to the lower end of the radius it will be attached to the margins of the head of the radius or uh, margins of the head okay and to the ulna it will be attached to the margins of the trochlear notch i hope it is clear okay so this is how the capsule of the elbow joint is going to be attached at the upper end i have already discussed and the lower end it will be attached to the margins of the trochlea uh, margins of the head of the radius and lower part it will be attached to the margins of the trochlear notch of the ulna now this to make this capsule uh, strong there are two ligaments which are called as anterior and posterior ligaments which strengthen the uh, which strengthen the capsule anteriorly and posteriorly and they are not considered as separate ligaments of the joint okay now we'll talk about two very important ligaments we'll talk them at uh, at uh, and at first here you we'll have radial collateral ligament radial collateral ligament and then you will have ulnar collateral ligament we'll talk of them side by side so that it is easier for you to understand okay now what are the common things about this radial collateral ligament obviously you should understand it will be attached to the radius and uh, sorry to the lateral part of the humerus and to the radius and ulnar collateral ligament to the medial end to the humerus and to the ulna now how do you draw this ligament i'll try to make a diagram which is simple this is the uh, humerus which is the lateral epicondyle here we have the capital of then below down you will have the radius like this i am just drawing one half here okay now on the medial side again if you draw this medial epicondyle you will have to draw trochlear notch of the ulna trochlea sorry and then inferiorly you will have the trochlear notch of the ulna like this okay so this is how you have to understand now what is common what is common in both these ligaments is that both these ligaments are triangular in shape okay both the ligaments are triangular in shape so it will have an apex and then it will have three borders but radial collateral ligament is not a it uh, ulnar collateral ligament is proper is a proper triangle like this but radial collateral triangle looks like a japanese fan it will open up it will open up like this so it will not have three borders like this so if you it starts from the apex of the radial collateral ligament will be attached here to the lateral epicondyle and then it fans out like this and then it will be attached to what is called as the annular ligament of superior radial ulnar joint annular ligament is going to be covering 
that is a ligament which is going to be attaching the radius if I draw the ulna here at the sides there would be a ligament that is going to be covering the radius and the ulna like this and that is called as the annular ligament so understood the radial collateral ligament will be apex of this will be attached to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and then it fans out it will fan out and will be attached where it will be attached to this annular ligament of superior radial ulnar joint is this clear now on similar lines see you have to ulnar collateral ligament is a proper triangle the apex of this will be attached to the medial epicondyle of the humerus and then it will have an anterior band which comes and attaches to the coronoid process of the ulna there would be a posterior band which is attached to the olecranon process of the ulna see you should understand that a trochlear notch is made up of olecranon process which is vertical and a coronoid process which is horizontal so it will have an anterior band which goes to the coronoid process and a posterior band which goes to the olecranon process and both these bands are connected to each other by an oblique band so that is how the ulnar collateral ligament is attached i hope it is clear i'll repeat one more time first both these ligaments radial collateral ligament and ulnar collateral ligaments are triangular in shape okay both of them are attached I mean, the radial collateral ligament will be attached to the lateral uh, epicondyle and this will be attached to the medial epicondyle now from the lateral epicondyle the radial collateral ligament will fan out and will be attached where it will be attached down to the annular ligament annular ligament of superior radial ulnar joint okay and what is the difference here in the ulnar collateral ligament apex is attached to the medial epicondyle of the humerus there would be an anterior band which will be attached to the coronoid process and a posterior band which is attached to the olecranon process and then there will be a oblique band okay i hope these ligaments are clear these are three ligaments very simple ligaments of the ankle joint uh, of the elbow joint sorry so only three ligaments here that is about the ligaments of the elbow joint now going further what next point is there after ligaments you write about relations na no? now relations of the elbow joint again are very simple anterior relations are here last time last video we have talked about the cubital fossa so anterior relation would be the floor of the cubital fossa that is brachialis supinator and the contents of the cubital fossa mbbs median nerve brachial artery biceps tendon and superficial branch of radial nerve here the anterior relations posterior relation this muscle here is the triceps and there is another muscle that is anconius on the medial side if you see you will have the ulnar nerve which goes behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus and you will have the common flexor origin so these become the major relations very simple to remember the relations because only anterior and posterior relations are there not much nothing much to talk about here okay so that those are the relations and now the next point is blood supply and no supply blood supply of the elbow joint is by an anastomosis anastomosis meaning a network of arteries which is there around the elbow joint it is called as the anastomosis around the elbow joint which is formed by the branches of the uh, brachial artery and the radial and the ulnar arteries so the, that is the blood supply the nerve supply is all the important nerves which of the upper limb which you have talked of or which you have which you know musculocutaneous nerve radial nerve ulnar nerve and median nerve all those nerves are going to supply blood to the uh, sorry the nerve supply to the elbow joint now the last point is very important that is the most important point that is movements and which muscles produce those movements okay now movements as we know this is a uniaxial joint so there are only two movements here also the elbow joint becomes very simple there are only two movements flexion and extension only two movements here okay so which are the muscles that this is flexion of the elbow joint and the other movement is extension okay so flexion you have to remember three b's these three b's are biceps brachialis and brachioradialis remember this okay so biceps brachialis and brachioradialis these are the three b's biceps is straight here below the biceps is brachialis they will flex the elbow joint like this you can also feel the move muscle contracting here but brachioradialis you should remember brachioradialis is the muscle which is present on the side it will flex the elbow in the mid prone position that is very important 
okay this it will not flex the elbow like this it is going to flex the elbow in the mid prone position clear yeah, so these are the three muscles which produce flexion and extension is produced by two muscles which are the posterior division that is triceps and ankylosis okay so that is about the movements very simple only two movements which you know about the elbow and flexion and extension flexion remember three b's biceps brachialis and brachioradialis but what you should remember about brachioradialis is that brachioradialis is going to bring about flexion in the mid prone position and biceps and brachialis will bring about here in the straight straight way flexion and extension is done by triceps and ankylosis i hope till here it is clear now when you talk about the last part of the answer and uh, is the applied anatomy there are many applied anatomies which are in relation to the elbow or rather there are many elbows which you should remember in applied anatomy one elbow is called student's elbow then you will have a tennis elbow then there is minor's elbow etc etc we'll talk about important things first now before going to elbow very rarely you should understand that because elbow joint is a stable joint dislocation of the elbow joint is not were seen very easily but if uh, if you try to lift a child in the wrong way if you try to lift a child through his wrist and then there is a jerk which is given into the elbow right the head of the radius can slip from the capitula and that condition is called subluxation of the head of the radius that again it's not exactly a, a what you can say dislocation but the head just slightly goes comes out from the capitula that is called subluxation of the head of the radius of the various elbows the first elbow which you should know is tennis elbow this is seen commonly in tennis players when there is abrupt pronation and extension of the elbow right there is strain of the lateral ligament or radial collateral ligament and that causes pain here so that condition is called tennis elbow on the medial side you will have a medial ligament or ulnar collateral ligament this elbow is also called as golfer's elbow or minor's elbow when a golfer is going to hit the ball like this there can be stretching of this ligament or a minor who is doing this so there is stretch a uh, constant stress over this ligament and that elbow is called golfer's elbow student's elbow is a condition where students are resting their elbow upon the bench and then this bursa which is there between the triceps and the olecranon process that bursa gets inflamed and then there is swelling there so that that is called as student's elbow so that is all about the elbow right a very short simple topic a very beautiful joint a very easy joint to understand i hope you have understood the joint kindly like my video share my video and subscribe to my channel thank you